Well, it's Monster Monday. And you know who one of the biggest types of monsters on social media are? Let's go to the worst platform for social media. Facebook. People who post a partial story and then make you go to the link in the comments to read the rest of them and it's ad-ridden and annoying as fuck to navigate. It's just like, do I really want to read this? Hell no. Because you start to read it and you're like, oh fuck, it's one of these again. There's nothing more annoying than those stupid stories. I wish there was a way to, like, I wish somebody would just ban them. I, I wish somebody would just, like, ban the whole thing, because it's so, oh my god. It's like, no, if you're going to tell a story, I want to hear the fucking complete story. Don't half-ass this shit and put the rest of it on a stupid website that's full of fucking ads of shit that I'm not going to buy. Like, you st Ugh. Those are, those are some of the real monsters on social media. Like, and it's annoying because Facebook has, the only option you can really do to not see that is to snooze the page for like 30 days. And then of course in another 30 days, another one fucking pops up and you're just like, oh, here we go again. There's no way to completely... Say, fuck it, I don't ever want to see anything from that page again. It's only snoozing for 30 days. It's the only option you have. It's bullshit. But yeah. That is our monster highlight. How many of y'all have countless times started reading a story thing on Facebook and realized it was one of those and you're like, son of a fucking bitch. And then just snooze the hell out of them. Like, I just want to know how many of y'all in the comments have done that. Because, you know, when you're sitting on the crapper browsing through social media, because we all do it, like, that's the last thing you want to freaking deal with. It's just like, no, if you're going to share a story, share the whole fucking thing. If it's going to be that damn long, then it shouldn't even be there. Sometimes you just can't win. Oh, well. It is what it is. Now. Going back to... Yesterday, because that's usually what I do in the vlogs, talk about the day before, since I re do these early, early, early in the morning. Um, stream was going great. I was leveling my Volpera Mage, which I'm surprised how many views the first VOD of that actually got. Because I have never leveled an Arcane Mage before. I've done, I did Frost once, a long time ago, deleted it. The only thing that I thought was kind of cool about it was that you get a pet. That little ice elemental thing or whatever the hell it is. After that, the only other mages I've made have been fire. And I've really enjoyed fire. And I've never tried arcane. And then I was told, you know, arcane's really OP and it's good for farming, like, dungeons and stuff. So, like... I always used my druid to farm for transmogs, because druids, feral druids have swipe, which just kind of takes everything out. Um, but I'll admit, I, I've been enjoying having the arcane mage, and not only that, you gotta think, hey, they can drop portals 
to places for people. Not only that, they can conjure their own food, which I think is kind of funny that it's different desserts, although it's in a really weird order. Like, it's brownies, then cupcakes, then lollipops. You would think lollipop would be first. And then a pie. And I have no idea what's next, but it's just kind of funny, the different sweets that they conjure for bringing their health and mana back. Um, Manta Ray Gen's not bad, though. Like, it used to be terrible. But, uh... But, yeah, I've been thoroughly enjoying it. And... We are gonna test it on farming some stuff. Eventually. But anyway, I'm enjoying my stream, just level on my mage through Dragon Isles. And I, it's one of the things with Dragon Isles, it's really annoying, which they need to change if they can, is the fact that you actually have to do the dragon riding um, tutorial shit before you can even continue going further. Because the quests don't show up otherwise. And, you know, now that you no longer have to use dragon riding on Dragon Isles, it's relatively easy to cheat it by using Steady Flight. However, it's still annoying to have to do that just to continue the campaign. Like, they need to just take that away. They need to make that an option and just get rid of it. Like, if people want to do it, they can do it. To practice. Like, I mean, yeah, it's good for a practice if you want to master dragon riding. And I suck it in, and I don't like it because it's hard to control. Um, kind of reminds me of Spyro flight things. I always had trouble controlling that, which is why those levels I never did. I tried them a couple times, got pissed off, and said, that's it, I'm not doing it anymore. Because that's just how I am with games. Games are supposed to be fun, not stressful, and to me that was stressful. Now I get it, War Within, I'm gonna have to fucking deal with it, and it's gonna suck. But... I'm gonna use my damn ground mounts as much as I possibly can. Because, like I said, dragon riding's annoying. Um, unless I just fucking wait until they change it, but that would be a whole nother expansion, probably, if there's even gonna be another one after that. So, I'm leveling. And I get a text. I got a text from Mom. Wanting me to come over. I'm like, well, this is last minute, but at the same time... I really didn't have anything planned, uh, other than doing dad jokes, which thank God I was able to do that because there was no construction on Sunday. So it's like, I literally get one day of the week that I can record dad jokes, so it's only going to be three for the week, and one will be, I think I'll just upload them Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, because um, then... Friday is Goofy Granny, and Saturday is You Might Be a Carrot. Uh, and here comes the floof. Poppy! Hi, cutie. So, I went over to Mom's. Got my big old jar of ratatouille that she had up in the freezer. So I could take that for lunch. She actually has gotten obsessed with ratatouille now. And she actually made a pizza with ratatouille on it and then put cheese over that. And that was freaking good. Um, but she had wanted me to help clean the porches off because the shingles are getting redone. Well, let's just leave it at this. The shingles on the house itself have not been 
done in over 30 years. Not since the upstairs was built for my grandmother to live in. So yeah, that was in the 90s. Uh, for the most part, the house looks okay. There's like one little bad spot up by the by the old chimney, which, you know, is not in use. Um, so that's up over the attic, basically. Um, but it's not even that big. But this house has a rarity of three porches on it. The first one that was built, well, when they moved into the house, the living room had been an addition. It was an old um, schoolhouse from the 1880s. So a little history here. So this house is old as fuck, but it was made of, of solid stone. Um, so it's, it's very sturdy. Well, the lower part of it, the, the main part of it. The living room had been an addition to the, you know, from the person, I guess, who had lived there prior. And outside of the living room, you got the front door and then there's a back door. The back door is a big glass sliding door, and then when you open that, there's a giant cement slab. Now, when I was growing up, there wasn't even a porch there. It was just that giant cement slab. And then there was a stone pathway out into the, the backyard. Um, and it had been that way for a long, long time. And then they finally got a screened, eventually got a screened-in porch built around that cement slab. But because of its being where it is on the house, it made the living room very dark. So basically they had to put, when they built it, they had to put skylights in it to keep the living room from getting overly dark. So the skylights definitely will have to stay, well, be redone basically. But, um... Then when my grandmother, they had the upstairs built for my grandmother to move in, she also had a porch built upstairs. Now, the house has a shed on the back of it, which is just connected to it, and it's basically covering the water tanks. At the fuel tank, actually the fuel tanks, because it has a well, but it's like, it's... The well is just a giant cement covering, and then you lift the cover off in the middle. But the fuel tanks are in the back, and the shed was basically built to cover that. So that's also shingled. That's not getting redone because it's covered now by the upstairs porch. So it's kind of not necessary because it's, it's protected. That would probably be a pain in the ass anyway. But my grandmother had had a built-in screened porch when she moved in with her cat. So that the cats could go out there and kind of enjoy some fresh air. And then, of course, because it being up so high, there's like, there's that part. And then there's a little part outside of it. And then the steps going all the way down. So it's a pretty long flight of steps. And then my parents had a side porch built on to what we call the mud room, which is like where you take off your dirty shoes or whatever and come in. Well, most of the time they do it out, they put it out on the porch, but so we, that's the only porch that's not screened in. This is the side one. So two are screened in and it's the same person that built all three porches. She's like, I've never built this many porches on a house before. But anyway, so the roof on the back porch and the upstairs porch now need completely redone, as well as the shingles on the rest of the house. So that is happening starting today, because otherwise they would have to wait till spring. So it's going to be probably worked on this week. I don't think they're going to... I don't know, they can shingle places really quick nowadays, in, in like a few hours. But, it, you know, with the fact that they're having to replace the wood for the porches is going to be... Um, it's going to take lo definitely longer than a day. Like, they can probably do the house part in a day. 
but it's definitely going to take longer to fix the porches. So I had to help mom clean them off, and in the process, we found some uh, unknown treasures. Now, on the back porch that's screened in, mom had left a space around the cement slab to plant ferns in, and the ferns pretty much survived. Now, there was another weed growing in there, which I pulled that out. But she's like, I want to make it all ferns in here when this is redone. Because before, there used to be pine, we had big pine trees growing next to it, which is also kind of made it dark. Um, they just got too big and out of hand, and I think that's part of what busted a hole in that roof. Um, they, they just got way too big. So those pine trees have been cut down so more light comes in, and the ferns should be able to actually thrive in there. Um, but she also has a futon in there, and she, and I'm like, we're not moving that her way. She's like, no, nah, we're not gonna, we'll just, t we have a tarp, we'll just cover it with a tarp. Because it's solid wood futon, nothing's really gonna hurt it that bad, and she's not, I mean, she's not that worried about it. And it is gonna need, like, a new, because she did get a carpeting, like one of those outdoor carpetings put over the cement slat. But... She found a whole thing of, um, aprons, white aprons, that she used, or that were left over from Eldrith Pottery, which any of you who live in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania know Eldrith Pottery, is also no longer, um, in business, which is a real shame, because they made some amazing pottery. I have a few pieces from there. But she's like, do you want some of these? I'm like, yeah, I could tie-dye them. <laughs> um, so she gave me a good chunk of them. They just need to get washed. They still have, like, they still have, like, that brick red residue on them. Um, from the pottery. And I'm like, they, yeah, obviously they need washed because they've been sitting out on that porch and, you know, there's holes in the screen and whatever, but... I was like, I ain't even worried if the freaking... The, the clay doesn't come out of it, like, but yeah, I could tie-dye them, because she had told me before, she's like, no, with this roof getting redone, Christmas is going to be very lean, I said, mom, I'm not worried about that, it's some the, something that'll make the house look better, put you guys at peace of mind, I don't care about stuff for Christmas, I really don't, um, so I was like, if you want to get me anything little, get me some more spray tie-dye, and I'll send Dad the link to my Amazon list, and he can, because I've already put, you know, color sets that I want on there. It's like, just get me some of that, and then I can spray, like, tie-dye spray the freaking aprons. And I can use them for cooking, for crafts, whatever. And it's like, yeah, I did buy a couple here from Walmart, but I might save these ones for, like, um, giveaways or something. So, I got that, a couple of her old paintings that she left up in the upstairs porch. One of them is oil, so I don't know how I'm gonna clean it, because it did get kind of dusty. <clears throat> but, she's like, do you have room for that? It's just pretty big. I'm like, Mom, we have, like, no pictures. <laughs> we have a ton of wall space. <laughs> She's like, man, if I had known that, I'd have made you bigger ones for Christmas. Oh, Lord. Um. But, so, there was that. And there was also, uh, Munchkin was even amazed at some of the stuff that they had that's old and, like, I don't even know if Walmart carries anymore the old, the old, uh, straw brooms. Mom had a couple of them sitting around. And she's like, I've never seen a broom like that before. I'm like, yeah, because you're used to seeing them all plastic. I was like, this is the first type of broom ever, like, like, good broom ever made, and they've been made for a long time. 
And, uh, we even looked it up to see how far back it went. It was, like, 1791 or something like that. <laughs> so it goes way, way back. Very, very good broom. So, because, like, obviously upstairs a lot of leaves had gotten in on that outside part. In fact, it got so thick I had to go get the freaking <clears throat> metal rake just to get them out of the one corner. But yeah, so mom had also left her oil paintings out there, or oil paints out there, and um, the ones that were exposed we just threw out, but the ones that were actually in a sealed tub, she's like, I'm just going to donate them to the Art Alliance because I don't even use oils anymore. There's no point in keeping them. And I'm like, yeah, and, I, and I've never used them and I really have no desire to because they take forever to dry. Like, I've always ever learned with acrylics. But yeah, so we found some pretty cool stuff, and it was kind of nice getting it all cleaned up, and uh, further down the road after, you know, the roof is, is all done and stuff, uh, definitely the, the wood on the rest of the porch, porches will have to be, uh, redone so that they're usable again. It'll make the house worth more. But yeah, so it, it was a, it was an interesting, interesting time. But good to get outside and get some fresh air because it was also very nice outside. And unfortunately, I didn't get to go see the horses because they were out in the field. I was like, well, at least they're not, you know, being lazy and in the barn. They're not wasting their time in the barn. Although it sucked, because I did want to get a video of, of Almo. Because every time he's in the barn when I go over there, he always nickers at me as soon as I call his name. Like, he knows. He's such a sweetheart. But, that was pretty much yesterday in a nutshell. Did that, went shopping, made dinner, did laundry, went to bed, <laughs> pretty much. So today's another Monday of work. We'll see how this goes. And I'll see you guys in the next video.